So recently I have been um checking out competitors for the title of best literary or book tracking site. I use lots of book tracking sites. I should back up and explain. Um I use tracking sites to keep track of my anime, what I'm watching there, um where I'm at in certain television series, for example, for things like Mystery Science Theater 3000, what episodes I have and have not seen, what stories of Doctor Who I have and have not seen, all that sort of thing. Um, and similar is the case for books, both tracking what I'm reading and what I want to read and where I'm at at the books I'm reading at any given time. In some cases, because I'm cycled between a couple different books, sometimes because due to necessities of checking a book out from the library, I and I might find myself switching between mediums, between a print version or a digital version or an audio book and a print version or in something along those lines. Because of that, I find myself in the past to be using Goodreads to keep track of what I've been reading. However, since then, I have, in a lot of, for a lot of reasons, become somewhat disillusioned with Goodreads. Um, and there's a lot of good reasons to do that. Uh, to be disillusioned. Charlie Jane Anders wrote an excellent piece on her substack. I think it's just not, not, not her substack, on her newsletter, um, getting into her issues she has with Goodreads. Additionally, a couple moderately high profile authors have made statements based on the fact that they've got what they've been told by publishers and others is that as far as ratings go on Goodreads, it's like rating your uber driver or your grubhub delivery driver it's the maximum possible rating on anything is the only thing that matters and anything below that is detrimental which if you're going to accurately evaluate and discuss your thoughts on a book then if you're going to use a rating at all you might as well use the whole rating it certainly also gets the whole idea of getting the toxicity of ratings and that sorts of things um, and the, but on the other hand, these services are also meant to help guide you to additional books you want to read. And sometimes you need to tell the thing, Hey, I, I thought this was mediocre. I thought this one was really good. I didn't like this one at all. With that in mind, I started looking at a couple different services to see what shakes up in terms of recommendation platforms and that sort of thing. Specifically. Storygraph and hardcover. Uh, hardcover. Well, there's, um, I mentioned that I had my Goodreads on my um, blog page, like an embed on the side where I was currently reading in the past. Um, I will put the link to the profile again for those who want to follow it there, and also have links to my um, to my Storygraph and hardcover profiles as well. So you can take a look at those. Uh, with that in mind, uh, let's talk about what works and work and doesn't work for me for Goodreads, and then to see where we go from there. Um, to a certain degree, one of the things that's helped keep me on Goodreads to an extent is a degree of inertia and a social inertia. If you've stuck with the social network, even when it's become a toxic because the people you follow are still there that that's that's why um previously it's a similar thing because previously goodreads used to have facebook integration like back when facebook allowed outside social apps to integrate allowing you to um link your facebook account to your goodreads account and see who on facebook was already on goodreads so you could follow and see what your real world friends were reading um, and other, and certainly a bunch of other people in my friends list from high school and college and that sort of thing had done the same. Um, that integration eventually went away, but my friends list is already on there. And that part, and unfortunately, the reason the integration went away is less because of Goodreads not wanting to fork out money and more Facebook closing off the API to want to keep people locked in rather than in outside services. Never mind the fact that Facebook doesn't do the same things that Storygraph and Goodreads and hard, and Hardcover and My Anime List and Analyst and all of that do in terms of 
helping you keep track of what anime series you're watching and what episode you're on, what books you've read, have currently are currently reading and have previously read and where you're at in those books and all this, that, and the other thing. With that in mind, that leads to this degree of inertia there. So partially what you're looking for, what I'm looking for is in terms of tracking things is one, a degree of social discoverability in the sense of can people find me or do you need a link from me to find me on a particular service? I'm looking for a good ways to track what I'm currently reading in terms of um, page count and or in particular, since I'm listing a fair number of audiobooks, where I'm at in the audiobook. Um, percentage counting also works as well. Um, that's what Goodreads uses. And I'm looking for a decent recommendation system of what I'm currently reading and what I've currently read and what the service thinks I might like going from that with the varying degrees, again, of success. With that in mind, um, just to get this out of the way now, I had previously looked into library thing as a way of trying to do some of this stuff. And what I found with library thing is that it works really well for tracking books you own, but not tracking books you're reading, particularly in terms of where you're at in books you're reading. It does not have that functionality at all. and Ultimately, it doesn't, if you're checking lots of books out from the library, it doesn't work well with that in that regard in terms of books that you've, like, you mark it as a book that you've read and maybe you have a separate shelf or organizational tag for library books. But it, it feels like it covers to a certain degree similar territory as the um, like other book, like various collector apps, but it doesn't handle that very... Like, well in execution for the all the rest of the stuff I want to do. So let's start with the story graph. Here's the good news. Um, tracking it handles tracking very well. Uh, page count, and most importantly, it handles, in terms of tracking, it handles audiobook timestamp really well and will also automatically calculate the percentage of the book that you have audiobook that you have listened to from that it only does hours and minutes but often i can feel okay like rounding up or down depending on where i'm at with terms of coming to the next minute that part's fine the recommendation system is all right um going by what do your job based on what you've read recently with going from there and do okay what are future reads you might want to I want to take a look at um, focusing on particular genres that you've read a bunch of, like, for example, mine is fair number of speculative fiction, fantasy, that sort of thing, along with, in a similar way, some uh, recommendations from outside of that. So that part, that part works well. Where it kind of stumbles is when it comes to finding user in, in terms of discovery, but in terms of people finding you like, and also seeing what your fellow people are doing. It does have like a community tab where you can see what other people are currently reading. Um, doesn't necessarily give uh, progress on them, but this is, Oh, uh, this user. Um, basically this user started reading this book. Uh, this reader finished reading this other book. This reader gave up on reading a different book, which also, by the way, something I appreciate is that it does give the option of the, for you to, in addition to read, to marking something as currently re as currently reading, finished reading, want to read, it also just gives a straight up did not finish option as opposed to um, removing an item from the bookshelf, which is something that Goodreads doesn't have. You can create a did not, um, finish status, but it does not necessarily, it's not designed in the way to necessarily incorporate, to, uh, incorporate that in its recommendations. It doesn't 
not set up in a way to say, oh, I did not finish reading, um, for example, um, this one Aliens licensed novel. Uh, and I put it because I didn't like the characters. And so, so I might say, okay, character driven works that are similar to this might be something to, to de escalate a little bit in, or not de escalate, but to tone down a little bit in your recommendation algorithm, for, in the recommendation picks, for example. So, that going for it. Um, it has. But oh, it has like a similar users tab, but it doesn't really have a good way to search for a user um, necessarily. So if I want to say, oh, my um, one of my friends from college is on Storygraph now, I can't necessarily search for a particular username and say, oh, I know that this person's username is might be close to this because that's what they've used elsewhere or that sort of thing. I have to get a link to their profile from them or they need to come up under similar users for me to then be able to select them as a person who I want to follow or we need to be on a book club thing. Speaking of which, um, as far as setups go, Goodreads book club mechanism works reasonably well it basically lets you create a small social group with a sub forum based on for a book club where you can focus on reading a book you can have dedicated sub discussions based on a particular book or books or that sort of thing depending on what your book club is and what the theme is whereas for how it works in um storygraph you can have meetings and like they have a light forum you can use, but not in a way to necessarily have your discussions grouped by a, like have a bunch of discussions grouped by the book and by a book. There was like nesting discussions, which as someone who follows the sword and laser book club and been taken part in the Goodreads discussions in the past is something I appreciate having. So I like Storygraph. I am certainly going to like, use it as like my my first choice sort of to migrate to, but that's main. Uh, if, if I was going to completely dump Goodreads, like I'm, basically like, I've basically dumped Twitter. Um, that puts it high up on the list. Additionally, also like. Storygraph, this just feels like it should be basic functionality, but we'll, we'll get to this when we talk about hardcover. Let you select a specific edition of a book to use for your what you're reading rel um, fairly readily. Whereas a bunch of the, whereas we get Goodread, well, Goodreads in the app doesn't let you do this well, but we'll let you do it in the browser. And, we'll, and this is actually a good place to migrate over to hardcover. So hardcover, I should give the asterisk, is, is fairly early in development. This functionality is still rolling out slowly over time. Um, and with this, there is a bunch of stuff that is eventually going to come out. And some of these function features that I'm looking for would be nice to have eventually, but they don't have it yet. And so here's some of the like important stuff. Like when I'm reading a book, I, I'm picking a book to read. I'd like to select the edition of what I'm trying to read. Hardcover doesn't let me do that. It has multiple editions of a book and you can put in like the runtime of the audio book. You can put in the page count for a print book. You can put cover art and that sort of thing. But like I'm listening to the audiobook of Carl Sagan's Cosmos right now. Uh, it's a particular edition, the one that has uh, the introduction introductions by Neil deGrasse Tyson and um, Andrew Yen in front of it. And I do, and um, 
all of that. But I can't put the audiobook, select the audiobook and put in my timestamp information for that and use that to calculate how far I am in a book. And our other is, I, I can take the percentage information from Storygraph, plug that in there. But otherwise, I would have to calculate the percentage manually. The same problem I have with Goodreads. The, I can set goals. I can set list prompts and that sort of thing from Goodreads by comparison. Um, I can create book lists and that sort of stuff. Um, I do appreciate, we'll get into this minute, both of these apps have pretty good tagging systems for the books that you have in terms of letting you mark genres and themes and that sort of thing for the book. Um, additionally, one thing I like about hardcover that good that um, Storygraph doesn't have is for Storygraph, you can put content advisories in once you finish the book in terms of, oh, uh, this book has a scene of sexual assault. I, um, I want to make sure to note that so that if somebody comes into this, they know going in, this is something to watch out for, something to be careful about. Um, Storygraph, you have to put it in at the review once you've finished the book. In hardcover, you can just put that in at any time. When you go into, you, you read that section of the book, go, oh, I didn't know about this. Um, I'm going to go into the hardcover profile page and plug that in there. Easy breezy. Uh, the software is, has some interesting stuff that is in progress um, that I'm interested about. It has a tracker that will let you know, oh, you're, how far are you in this book series right now? Um, like what one, here's the ones you've read. Here's a bunch of ones you haven't read yet. Here's the number like for a, a fiction series, novel series, a graphic novel series, what have you. Um, and also here's the mark. Oh, I know you've actually read everything by now. So, um, like I'm looking, going through this and see, yeah, oh, yes, I've, I've read all seven volumes of Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Um, where things get a little, but it's not also not necessarily complete. And some of this again is relatively new. It's data set is not complete. For example, I have read every volume of Neon Just of the Neon Just Evangelion manga, but it's not showing that I've read every volume of the Evangelion manga under their list page. So that's something where I'd, what I'd have to do. I have librarian permissions is to go back in there and go make sure every book in this series is marked accordingly. Um, other issues that I've run into on hardcover, um, like user discoverability, it has a similar problem. Um, like I can find my friends, I can browse books. Um, all right, so I can't search for specific users, but it doesn't necessarily have user recommendations. So for example, I can search for, going to search for Veronica Belmont and she comes up on the list of uh, Veronica Belmont of the Sword and Laser Book Club podcast. She's on there. She has a profile. I'm following it. Um, but, um, and otherwise, like, like, like I said, that's something it has a strength for over, um, over story graph. But again, it's, Weird and updating in a bunch of other places. Like, for example, uh, here's like a good one. Um, I'm looking at it right now. Um, I finished reading Miss Marvel, the new Mint, new mutant. Um, the edition in the, uh, doesn't have the book, a couple, actually a couple books, for example. Um, 
I have populated books with the correct cover art, but it's not showing up either on the actual book itself or um, on that edition. Or in some cases, like there will be the one edition and it has that cover as cover art for the edition, but it doesn't populate to the book itself. It's like a bunch of really weird technical hiccups. Again, hardcovers relatively new, particularly by comparison to Storygraph, but it also feels like it's trying to do a lot more flash, not in terms of the, the, the software platform that's been created, but in terms of be a flashier site. And the ways that it is trying to be flashy is causing it is not executing properly, and so it's stumbling unintentionally. I mean, it works well enough. Um, I'm sticking around on hardcover for I'm sticking around, I stick around on both the same way that I have profiles and that I actively update on Analyst and Kitsu. Um, but hardcover, I want it to do well. I want to recommend it, but it's not quite there yet. feels like it needs something else. But I don't know. Like, I mean, like, outs like it, it needs a lot more polish. And some of that's going to come with time. But it's a situation where me as an early adopter, I'm all on board for this. But for, unless you're like all for beat for being the early adopter and going through the growing pains of a service, which admittedly is something I've done. It's something I did with um, Gmail. I was involved in the Gmail beta. Just my lights are red. Like I was, I was on the beta for Gmail. I was on a bunch. I just drive the whole, just drove a whole bunch of other services. So I'm, I'm from like I'm familiar with being on the cutting edge of social media services and having to deal with weird hiccups. I remember the Twitter fail whale, but this still, again, it makes it where I don't know, like for, it's definitely not ready for prime time in a way where Storygraph, while it's still relatively young as a platform like this, feels more like it is ready for prime time than um than hardcover is. Story um Storygraph's a little older, which helps, but even when I jumped on board, I had a sense of, oh, I know where this is going. Or at least I, I feel a sense of polish to this, where I'm not doesn't have the uh, all of the functionality of Goodreads, but it's not tripping over its own feet in ways that hardcover is at this time. Again, hardcover feels very, very like ambitious, but unpolished. So that's where we're at. Um, do you use, use either site? Let me know what you think. Again, I'm going to keep using both. I'm looking for that time where I can just cut bait on Goodreads entirely and go to one of these permanently and have all my functionality with it. Um, preferably having bringing a whole bunch of friends over along the way, but we'll see how this goes. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, Toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.